And how are you today? I like sausages. We'd like to welcome you to this episode of Cash Canada Chats. And with us today, we have two reviewers from the province of Ontario. We'll let them introduce themselves and then get right into it. So, um, RCA 777 is my player name. My name is Roy, and review name is Cash Shadow, and I've been reviewing since 2000. And Eleven. Sounds about right. right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Colin. You might know me as the Blue Quasar from the Niagara region. I review under the handle of Cash Drone. I've been doing so since uh, 2006. Yeah, 2006 sounds about right. Who's been a uh, reviewer longer? It's really a difficult to say if you're going to say longer. If you mean in length of time, I've been the reviewer longer, but in volume of handling reviews. I think Roy has certainly uh, <laughs> done his fair share. I like clicking buttons. And how did you become a reviewer? I'll start by saying the one way not to become a reviewer is to ask. Uh, typically that is frowned upon, but uh, the best way to become a reviewer is if you do a lot of positive things for the community, are very supportive of Groundspeak and, and their initiatives, uh, work with local parks to encourage development of geocaching. Sometime in the future, you might get a tap on the shoulder. Or, if you have an abundance of spare time, and someone decides that you don't need it, uh, you'd like to be persecuted through emails 1% of the time, praised 80% of the time, and ignored 20% of the time. <laughs> and I know that you can't do math, then my mods could be a reviewer as well. What made you accept that offer? Um, it's the best way to get back to the game that I love. I really enjoy the game. It, it's a, a great outlet for people to get off the couch and get back out into nature but still embrace technology. And uh, I wanted to promote the growth of that and uh, be able to not only provide some insight but also to see and encourage great growth of how people could be creative or enjoy expressing themselves through the hobby. Are there times that you regret becoming a reviewer? Never. No? Really? Not once. No, reviewing is actually, <laughs> it's a really enjoyable hobby as a side part of the game. Uh, we see lots of creativity, lots of great player interactions. I, I know that there's a feeling out there that the reviewer role is very hard. And, and complicated and it's really not it's it's maybe one in a hundred is is actually uh, a bit frustrating but even then it's it's nice to work with people through those aspects to get their things brought out to the public you must have a, a great community there must be kind of a hangout that you guys do or get togethers we do have a great hangout area very similar to a lot of online forums that you may be familiar with or Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, any of those types of things. We have a, a little private reviewer community, uh, let's just call it the reviewer clubhouse, that uh, we get to share ideas or bounce I things off of each other. Sometimes when we're not sure, we say, eh, I need a second set of eyes or third set of eyes. And uh, you would think that it's all dry, but no, we have a lot of fun um, bringing up really neat stuff. It's great. So we have a private jet. <laughs> He does tours and trips, um, there's bottle service, um, it's a club, it's fantastic. Um, the pay is not great, but the vacation plan is awesome. We, got a, we did get a 10% raise this year, yeah, that was nice. A 10% of nothing is... Well, there you go. Nothing. Those are your words. Yeah. <laughs> Who does more work? Is there one that does more work than the other? I click more buttons, I review more caches, post review notes to more caches, archive more caches, and probably send more emails. I'm responsible for the sweeping function within Ontario, which is going to the caches that are long disabled, uh, giving the owners a nudge, and or archiving the cache when they've been uh, left abandoned or need to be abandoned for a while. So I have a lot more button clicks. However, when we, within the team, if we have a cache that we want to get a second opinion on, we will share that workload. Uh, we'll get the opinions from everybody else, what's 
what's going on, what they think we should should not do. So even though I might be clicking a lot more buttons, there's a lot of interactions with other members which contribute to my end result. So there might, it's not just about the numbers of caches that you see, either with publisher or an archive. Uh, we work as a team. I would say probably more than most reviewing regions. We talk to each other frequently, uh, sometimes about all types of cache that are in the queue, not just the popular difficult ones, and all the bets. We have an opinion, we will try and come to a compromise, and then try and come up with a, I guess, a line in the sand or an approach. We put things in our Ontario wiki so the players can refer to it and they have a standard to go to. And that also helps keep us honest um, and consistent. So we might, the three of us in Ontario might say, well, should we have this as our line in the sand? And then we might compromise and come up with what the line should be. That's extra work. This may not show out in the caches themselves, but that's another example where Colin puts a lot of effort into, okay, well, how can we word this? How can we come up with this approach? This makes sense in this situation. What about this situation? So it's not just button clicking, which I do a lot of. It's a lot of discussion and really a best approach for the community. It happens, it this happens all the time. It does. Actually, yeah. they always say, please not cash drop. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and honestly, sometimes it's funny, we'll get a reviewer note. It's like, hi, Roy. Here, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, um, I'm not sure why you're assuming you're getting Roy, but, and that's okay. Uh, or you know, sometimes people will discuss stuff with me in, in over Gmail, and then say, you know, "How do I make sure that you know what we've talked about carries forward?" And I say, "Just please add a review or note. Say, leave this for Cash Drone, leave this for Colin, and uh, that way the other two know." And we, the same with Roy, or the same with Tony. Uh, if we've already started working on something with someone, we'd rather a note be there, so that way. It's very rare that a case comes up where somebody says, I, I, I don't want this one reviewer, because they know that even if one of us has a bit of a conflict, we will always discuss it with the other ones anyway. And yeah. If there's a series of caches, it makes sense sometimes to have that continuity. It can be challenging if someone puts five caches in the queue, and then on the sixth cache put, oh, this is part of a series. Because a reviewer might have grabbed the first five and started the review, and if they say, for example, we'd like these published on whatever day in the morning, well, if they've made an effort to make sure that's happening, then there's somebody else is doing additional effort to do the next batch and the next batch. So it makes sense if there's a series to say, if these can be only handled as a series, and then we'll work between ourselves to hand those out. Or if you see a reviewer note on your first couple of caches from one reviewer, and you see another reviewer for the second couple, send them both a note. Say, hey, by the way, they're part of a series. If you guys want to work together or hand them over, that's great. If you hand them as is, fantastic. But it's a lot easier if you're working on a lot of caches for you to have one person to interact with because you may have a theme. You might have the same issue on multiple caches. You might have the same change you want to make after they've been locked. For example, if you've asked for a future publish date, it's easier just to have that one point of contact. So if you express, in your review and note, we you submit your cache. This is part of the series. One of us might handle it all together. If you're working with one reviewer and you put the note in that says, this is for such and such, that's great. But if one of us isn't going to be available, another one of the team might take over. So it's more of an indicator of things being together versus a, please don't give me that person to review. Because why would anybody ever want to avoid any of us? Yes, exactly. And just to add maybe a little bit more detail to what Roy said, if you're putting out a series of caches, that note that you put on the first one or the last one, please just put it on every single one. That way we don't miss it because we tend to treat each listing on its own. Even if we see one of 12, two of 12, three of we do sometimes get a little bit of what's called tunnel vision. So we look at that reviewer note and if it says, this is part of a series, that kind of gives us that second, oh, right, hang on to this one, don't don't move so fast. Can't just hit the button. If it's in there for each one, less likely for us to miss it. What gives you more trouble? Is it a, a, a new geocacher or some veteran out there that uh, gives you kind of a, oh, ooh, gotta work on this one? Well, I have, I have an interesting thing to say on this, but I wanna hear what Roy says first. <laughs> I don't think trouble is the right word. 
I think difficulties. Um, if there are differences in interpretations of what's guideline compliant, I'm not sure it matters how long you've been in the game. It's about your level of passion, about that cash or those caches. So if you are a first time player, first time hider, and you're told it's too close to something, you might be frustrated because it's your first time and you want to get into this and you're passionate about having it released. If you are someone who's got 400 hides and you're 401st and you're told, again, sorry you can't do that, you're passionate because you've done 400. Obviously, you feel you should know what you're doing and it must be some of the re reviewers pushing back for no reason. So I think if you're passionate about the game, it wouldn't matter where you are in the finds or hide scale, every instance can be different. Um, when people get passionate, they get stressed. So I would say that we have just as many proximity issues from experienced players as we do from brand new players. But perhaps the biggest difference is that newer players are not reading the, the website on large screens, they're reading them on small handheld screens. And when someone says, have you read the guidelines? Well, on a big screen, that's a few scrolls. On a small screen, that's a lifetime. Uh, so it's less likely for newer players, in my estimation, to have read the guidelines. We wouldn't be aware of their existence. So we might push back, which means you might get more instances of newer players being frustrated. But that doesn't mean that newer players are more of an issue than experienced players. It comes down to the individual, how passionate they are at that time, and more importantly is how we can get them through that to get the cash publishing. What did you want to say? <laughs> so what I find actually most interesting is the both ends of the spectrum, whether it be new player or a very established player, there is definitely a wide range in approaches. Most people who are in that, that been around for a while but not a really long time, they're pretty much all similar in their approach to things. So new players will either give a great job, they will give tons of information, they will follow the guidelines to the letter, communicate well, or Sometimes it's just a, they put it in for review and that's the last we see of it and we have a struggle getting that one established. On the other end of the spectrum with some very established players, they've gone through changes in the game and sometimes something will be brought to our attention from headquarters perspective or we'd like to get a bit more detail and it's a little hard to get some newer players on board with providing the extra info or going through an additional step that they haven't had to go through before and they don't see the reason why they need to do that whereas some other you know, established players will go oh okay yeah I saw that change and, and I need to integrate that into my approach so it, it really depends on the person most are very willing to go oh okay yeah I see that you guys are asking for this and that's great. And a few others say, oh, I've never had to do that before. It's like, no, yeah, but that, that little box that you checked off wasn't there before. Now it is because we've had some issues and nothing to do necessarily with you, but we've had some issues in other areas. So to be consistent, we'd like to have that same extra info across the board. It just makes it easier for us to hit that button that Roy loves to do. As an example for that, solutions for puzzles. It used to be you would put your puzzle on your cash page, submit for review, and we'd look at it, make an estimation, hit the button. But now we ask that folks put the solution or the method of solving the puzzle in a reviewer note before it's published. Helps the reviewer, helps the player so many times it helps root out some mistakes that have been made or some assumptions. I would say 99% of folks are quite happy to do that, but if you've not listed a puzzle in five years, you might be questioning, well, why are you doing that? That's, that's unnecessary. I've never had to do that before. Correct. Guidelines change over time, and every change that's made in the game at the back end, we attempt to integrate in the front end to give to the community. So there's always that, oh, by the way moment. And you can always take that as, as gently or as with much offense as you uniquely choose as an individual. We just help folks realize we want things to be published, when we ask a question, we're actually spending more of our time as well as your time. So we can save everybody's time by just getting as much information in the review and note for review up front.
Absolutely. What common mistakes do new geocachers make? Do you have any uh, advice for a new geocacher publishing a geocache? In real estate, they talk about location, location, location. I guess in reviewing, it would be details, details, details. If you can explain to us what the container is, how it is placed, where it is hidden, that goes a long way for us to publish the, the cache on the first time through. If you remember that any time you post a review a note as a player, whatever you include in that note goes away when the cache is published. So not only can you provide puzzle solutions, information, as Colin said about where, how, hidden, what is hidden in, you can also add photographs to that review and note and we'll see them and will help us with the review and they will disappear from the cache page when it's published. So as a new player, the more information the better. Also as a new player, the more experience you have, the better your hiding experience is likely going to be. So if you found five caches, 10 caches, 20 caches, you might have an idea of how some things in the game are, are maintained, hidden, or presented, but you still can always get a better idea. We still learn decades after starting playing the game, oh, that's another way to do it. Finding more helps you hide better caches in most cases. Not being said, there aren't folks who their first cache wasn't just absolutely amazing, but those folks have typically done some research, they've read up on the guidelines, they've looked at other hides, and they've come up with something that just works. And it can be something as simple as container choice. So in Ontario, we have a requirement that your container be suitable for outdoor life in Ontario, which means temperature extremes, it means snow, it means heat. A container that might look like it's waterproof today might fail miserably in February in Ontario. So we push that back, and if you have all the other checkboxes of good coordinates and a good hiding place and no proximity, that still is a concern. So if you found more caches and you found a few soggy ones, you'll learn that a lip balm container isn't a good cache container. And so that experience is invaluable as a new player. And I recommend just find more before you hide. A quick aspect on that as well is that some things that are locally known and accepted might be terms that we don't know. I, I live in the Niagara Falls area, Roy lives north of Toronto, Tony lives out Windsor or Sarnia way. From reviewing I've heard terms I've never experienced before like Ottawa uses the term AMIAT, A-M-I-A-T, and I oh, see what? by Dave's expression what's an AMIAT? It's, it's a micro in a tree. Um, Lisa tube. Lisa tube. Lisa tube. I had no idea what a Lisa tube Lisa was. Tubes. Yes. <laughs> it's like, and people would tell me, "Oh, it's a Lisa tube." I'm like, going, "Huh?" And I push back, like only twice, because once somebody told me what it was, there's no need to ask anymore. Yeah, it, it's a it's a PMD. <laughs> oh, see, yeah. <laughs> so so it's it's all relative, but we can get that experience and exposure through great review notes and photographs. So we'll pick up on terminology that folks have in different locations. It's our role to be able to bridge your unpublished cache to a published cache. Whatever we can do to help you, that's great, but it is a two-way street. And, oh, and just to cap that off, same goes with puzzles. People will often throw things at, well, I know Roy knows this stuff way better than I do, but I'll, I'll get, oh, it's a bacon cipher. It's like, I don't know what that means. And, and I have to go look it up. Or, or rail f something or there's all kinds of these different ciphers or encryptions or whatever please help me out just point me in the direction where I can get the info so I don't have to go I, I don't exactly know what you're referring to it and it, it's very helpful if because to you it's very obvious what you're saying unfortunately I, I don't always pick up on it right away and I haven't always got right to bail me out do you remember aspects of hides, puzzles, etc., when finding caches as a player? Yeah, that, that's that's a good one because there's a lot of time you do remember a lot, you forget a lot. Uh, one that stands out is, is one by Carney Gruel that was OMG, and the community had a real hard time figuring it out. And of course, I couldn't go first to find it because he had explained 
how to solve it, which I'm not going to divulge here in case it's still active. Yep. But when I saw it, I'm like, oh, that's really brilliant. And it was frustrating for me because then it's like, well, that I don't get to solve the puzzle because I got too much information. And having to sit there and watch it not getting found or people talking about it, me going, oh, it's, <laughs> I could get it. I could get it. It's, it's very rare that something is so unique that I haven't seen it before. And it would stick in my mind for being so completely unique, but it would help in the guy scene. So it's either in my mind, processed and out the other ear, so to speak, or it's going to be just another one of those things that's in a certain way. And I think that I've not had cases where I've got somewhere and said, oh, I remember the lockbox combination is one, two, three. I've got somewhere and I'm like, oh, I remember this is a lockbox. I still want to go and have the fun of it. I do fewer puzzles nowadays simply because I have as much puzzle solving <laughs> viewing puzzles because there are times where folks will say, oh, uh, this puzzle involves knowing you need to have the recipe of a certain kind of cake and that cake was only sold in a factory that was close to where the cash was located in 1862. <laughs> and I'll look at it and go, okay, well I see the math, but where am I missing where the re reference to the factory is? Maybe it's in the cash page somewhere else. I don't see it. Hi there, can you please confirm for me how you get someone from your cash page to that leap? Is this a guess what I'm thinking puzzle? And there's so many times where things just make sense to us. We're creating puzzles that we leap from an idea to something definitive that feels like a solution. But no one's going to know that unless they contact you as a cash owner. And I spend so much time trying to deduce, guess what I'm thinking, puzzles, and letting folks know, and we need a little bit more breadcrumbs here, that I don't need to sit down and solve this and this puzzles anymore. My, my, my brain is saturated as is with what I see. So I typically will just do goal puzzles that I need for certain finds or to, to, to meet my own personal ambitions. Um, it hasn't affected me that way, but it's... We see a lot, and we retain a lot, I think, more concepts, more than specific GC codes. That was an example of one. Um, if anything, the ones that stick in my mind are the description of gadget caches. So it's not puzzles, it's someone says, to get this, you, you have to touch a certain place, find that moves, and it's a magnet, slide it such and such, such and such direction. Ah, so if I come across that gadget, like, okay, is this just a slidey one? which might make it a little easier for me, but it still doesn't take away the whole, that's a pretty cool cache. Yeah. That's interesting, guys. Do you see a lot of gadget caches during reviewing? Because I really don't see a lot of gadget caches. Oh, cash. I read. Hmm? Yeah, I read a lot. You read a lot? Yeah, the cache listings, it's part of reviewing. Oh, is that what we do? Yeah. But so still. <laughs> there are there are a lot of them. There are particular, particularly people who are known for just their gadget caches, and they'll provide great notes. And sometimes pictures. And you, 3D printers are magical things. So that's, that's been a definite change in the game in the past few years is to have prolific 3D printers have become, or even at libraries, people are making custom containers and they'll explain how it works. And I'll tell you that some of those, like, I really do want to go out and see them. Can geocachers contact you to ask you questions? Absolutely, through our profile pages. So yes. on our profile page, there's a send email link if you click that, uh, email arrives in our inboxes. If you have questions regarding a cache that concept, it's much better to create a cache page, write up the concept in there, and at the bottom of the reviewer notes say, do not publish. As long as coordinate checks, you can also check concepts. So I have an idea, this is what it would look like, uh, this is where the stages would be. We can then look at it with some relative um, context where it is, what's around, what you intended to do versus what you were trying to explain. So always write up cache pages. You can always create a cache page and send the GC code to a reviewer if, you, if you're comfortable that way. But typically the best way is just to say, hey, um, this is an idea I have. Can you check it out ahead of time and put it in the queue? And that's a fantastic way because we can then keep the conversation going on the cache page with the reviewer notes so we can all refer to it. And it also means that in the future, if you want to go back and say, oh, there was that thing or what they said I shouldn't do, you can go back into your email 
and take a look at that previous conversation history and refer back to that GC code, much easier to search for. A great, a great tool for, for the player end of things is the message center. However, it is not the most effective way for communicating with a reviewer. Uh, email is definitely the way to go. For me, mostly it's because I have the app configured for my player account. So if you send me a message through the message center to my reviewer account, it's unlikely for me to see it until I get an email to tell me that there's a message, in which case it's now a two-step process. And replying to an email is so much easier than, than replying through the message center, because again, we have to bring up the whole, I have to go to, through a bunch of hoops, whereas I could just hit a reply button. I think Roy would agree with me that, that it's much more streamlined just to email yeah. directly to us through our profile page. Uh, unless it's an existing cache that you want to post a review and don't want. Absolutely. Uh, message center, if you were to message center cache shadow, you're going to get back an auto response saying, hi, don't use this. So yes. <laughs> We'd like to thank uh, Roy and Colin for joining us here in Cache Canada Chats. And if, if you were wondering, Lyric Lass is here. Uh, she's just over to the side. There she is. <laughs> Uh, operating some of the other cameras uh, in our portfolio. So thanks again for uh, joining us and make sure please give some comments uh, in the comment section below and we can pass those questions on to the reviewers. Like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to share and subscribe. Subscribe to that little button down there and toggle the little bell. Bing, 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 bing. It's a regional game played globally. Like, share, and subscribe. Sausages.